Chapter 15, Hooky for Three. I was so nervous that I didn't even look at Mr. Smith when it came time to leave the room for my lesson. Forgive me, Mr. Bamwick, I thought, as I headed away from his room and toward the side door. Peeking out to make sure that no one was around, I sprinted to my bike, unlocked it, and headed out of the schoolyard as fast as I could. Duncan was waiting at the corner of Pine and Parker, sitting on a blue five-speed. Follow me, I said, and I kept riding from the edge of town. I checked my watch. It had been 12 minutes since I had left the class. If I could make it back just as fast, that would give me 16 minutes to take pictures. Peter was waiting in front of the hedge at Broxholm's house. I could see his smile quickly turn to a frown when he saw who was with me. His pale face turned even paler as we drew up. What's he doing here? demanded Peter. I was impressed. It took a lot of nerve for Peter to say that in front of Duncan. To my surprise, it was Duncan who tried to make peace. I just came to help, he said. He did say it kind of belligerently but he was holding up his hands with the palms out to show that he meant peace. He's going to be our lookout, I added, hoping that Peter would see the wisdom of this. He hesitated for a moment and then nodded. Okay, he said grudgingly, I guess you can stay. Duncan looked as pleased as a naughty puppy who had just been let back into the house. What do you want me to do, he asked. Stand right here, I said, indicating a spot just inside the hedge where he could have a good view of the sidewalk. If you see Mr. Smith coming, run up the, on the porch and pound on the door to give us a warning. Then run for your life. Duncan nodded seriously and took his place. I looked at Peter. He gave me a nod, and we headed for the back of the house. To my relief, the broken lock was still where Peter had jammed it back in place after our last adventure here. I had figured that that is a temporary tenant, Brock's home probably wouldn't keep that close of an eye on things that needed to be repaired around the place. It was nice to find out that I had been right. We opened the door and headed back to the alien's lair. I felt a little more at ease this time. After all, we could be pretty sure that Brock's home would stay at school. We knew exactly what we were, where we were going, and we had a lookout to help keep us from being surprised. How could we go wrong? You should never say that. The answer to that question was even worse than I expected. For the first few minutes, everything went as smooth as it could be. We made it out of the cellar and into the attic with no time. Nothing had changed. The column of blue light was still there, and poor Miss Schwartz was still trapped right in the middle of it. I rushed over to it and placed my hands against the force field. Almost instantly, I could hear Miss Schwartz's voice in my head. Hello, Susan. What are you doing here? We came to take some pictures of you so that we can prove what's going on, I thought back at her. Her reply scared me. Weren't you just here a few minutes ago, she said? She asked. She sounded confused. I bit my lip. Was she all right? Of course, since the thought was about her, Miss Schwartz picked it up. I'm not sure, she responded. It's getting so very hard to think in here. She paused for a moment and then asked, What day is this? It's Tuesday, I thought. Tuesday, the 24th of May. Her reaction almost knocked me over. You must do something, she thought desperately. It's only two days until Brock's home is planning his pickup. Susan, you have to do something. I know, I know, I replied. Her fear was coming through as clearly as her thoughts, and it was making me afraid, too. Our conversation was interrupted by Peter. Susan! We can't just stand here and chat. We've got to get these pictures taken. He was right, of course. Hang on, Miss Schwartz, I thought. We'll get you out of there somehow. 
Peter had already started flashing. That's good, he said. Let me get a couple more of you standing next to her. Then move away from the force field so I can get some of Miss Schwartz by herself. I was glad that Peter was there. I might have gotten so wound up talking to Miss Schwartz that I would have, wouldn't have taken the pictures in time to get back to school. But he was working fast. In a few minutes, he had used up most of the camera's memory, taking some pictures with flashes, some without, working from all different angles. I helped, and we did everything we could, everything we could think of to make sure we got at least one good shot. We were just trying to figure out the last angle when we heard a terrible scream from downstairs. Ah! 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 I couldn't make much sense of the words, but I recognized the voice. It belonged to Duncan Dougal.